this video is a process on replacing the iPhone 5S digitizer FPC. This is not a simple or easy repair. It does require a digital LC, uh, digital readout soldering station with specific temperature requirements. Here you see the damaged digitizer on an iPhone 5S. Here is a picture of the damaged FPC remote, same from, from the previous picture. As you can see, there are two chips on the top and bottom, or on the left and right of the FPC, which makes this repair particularly difficult. Those chips cannot be removed or touched, so special care must be paid to those two chips. This is not an issue with an iPhone 5 C FPC digitizer replacement. So the key to this particular repair is getting the the new FPC properly aligned onto the solder pads. And that's probably the most time spent. It has to be perfectly positioned left and right, top and bottom has to be over all solder pads I'm currently using magnification glasses which you cannot see and this is my iPhone recording the process it's on a clamp on a table that I'm currently using so my actions on a table obviously vibrate the phone and you see vibrations because every time I touch the table, it's an issue. After the anchor points have been, the left and right points have been soldered, I move on to uh, the rest of the solder pads. And this is just a chisel, chisel tip, and I'm just touching up all the points of the solder pads. Now please be aware this is not the final process. I am just literally just trying to get the FPC soldered in place. Additional solder must be placed on the soldering iron. And this is a chisel tip. So you can just touch that chisel tip to some solder wire and then it will flow into the solder points. Which I don't show in this particular video. It's a basic concept, basic technique. Uh, right now, again, this is just literally just trying to get the FPC soldered into place. Later on, I do place a little bit of solder onto the tip, and it flows onto the point. Flux is important. Make sure you always use flux. This is uh, before I use a chisel tip and place additional solder wire onto the soldering iron and the, the flux allows any existing solder on the solder pads to properly adhere to the, uh, the new FPC. This may get it done but I always like to put additional solder on the tip and it flows into the FPC. The uh, flux prevents oxidation, allows it to have a good solid joint. So always use flux. I don't show how to solder around the chips. As you can see, I'm avoiding the chips. It's a different technique for getting the solder, the soldering iron to solder those particular points that are near those two chips. Of course you have to be very careful not to touch them. If those things get removed, you are just SOL. So don't touch them. And again after the, I don't show in the video but I do put additional solder on the uh, soldering iron and it flows into the solder pads. And 
here's a picture of the final product. As you can see, those chips are on the chips. You can see there is uh, additional solder, very shiny. Looks good, no shorts. Some of the areas might look like they're shorts. There, there are no shorts. There's still uh, a little bit of alcohol left in this. I just need to, need to let it dry out. But uh, this is the end result. Uh, it's kind of hard to get uh, avoid getting solder on those test points. Uh, maybe if you want to cover them with a uh, uh, Kaplan tape.